In this episode of Flea Market Rescue, we're going to take that old magazine rack we got at the Goodwill and we're going to turn it into something that you could put on the porch of your cottage. Next, we'll go to the dollar store and pick up two plates and with thrift items, we'll turn this into a beautiful farmhouse scale. Then, what you didn't see in the Goodwill video is that I picked up this mother goose board and we're going to turn that into a beautiful bakery board. So you ready? Let's go ahead and do these. If you went thrifting with us last week, then you know we came across this magazine rack and it was only $1.99 and I had to have it. The first thing I did was take it home and I sanded it. Once I was done with that, it was time for paint. I'm using the Bare Paint and Primer in One in Pure White. I'm going to paint the entire thing in white, and it's definitely going to need two coats. After I apply my second coat and then let that dry, I took my silhouette and I cut some letters that I wanted to put on the front. First I had to pull away any extra vinyl that wasn't going to be used. Then with a needle, I had to weed out the inside of the letters. Then using some transfer tape, I went over it with a credit card so that the lettering would actually stick to the transfer tape. Before applying the vinyl lettering, I went ahead and took some sandpaper and just roughed up the edges. I think this really gives the piece a lot of character. I placed a design right on the front, and again using the credit card, I went over the transfer tape so that the lettering would adhere to the front. Then I carefully started to peel back the transfer tape. If you see some of the letters start coming up with the transfer tape, just go over it again with the credit card. And you especially want to be careful with the delicate lettering so that you don't pull it, just kind of go slow. Once you've completely pulled off the transfer tape, then just go over it one more time with the credit card to make sure all the lettering is down on your piece. Alright, I think that looks pretty darn good. This would look great on a porch. You could add some plants, you could add a throw, you could add them both. And look how cute that came out. And remember, we paid $1.99 for this, so see what you can do. You definitely can turn this into treasure. I'll have this final decal in my store if anyone's interested. Now onto the farmhouse scale. And it's very inexpensive to make. We're gonna start by getting two plates from the dollar store. Once you have your two plates, and you also could use metal or wood, I would not suggest glass or ceramic. 
But once you have those, you're going to need some finials. I got these at Hobby Lobby. And you're going to need two dowel rods, one larger one and one smaller one. Then you're going to need a candlestick. I bought this one from the thrift store. Um, it was $6.99 and I paid half price for that. First things first, you want to find a dowel rod that's going to fit inside your candle holder. And you want to make sure it's thick enough. Then you want to take the thinner dowel rod and position it where you think you would like for it to be. And you can take the plates and you can see how far they're going to hang down. This is going to tell you how tall your scale is going to be and that's where you're going to need to cut the dowel rod. Once you have your dowel rod cut, you're going to want to take that and you're going to put that into the candlestick. Kind of wedge that in there real good and then you're going to take the smaller dowel rod, go down just a little bit, extend it out, hold the plate underneath to see how far the plate goes out. That'll give you how long it needs to be on that side. Do the same thing on the other side with the plate and then that is where you're going to need to cut. Mark it and cut it. Now that you have both pieces cut, you can see that the smaller dowel rod is going to have to go through the thicker dowel rod. And to do that, we're going to have to drill a hole through. I'm hanging the thicker dowel rod over the counter and I'm drilling that way. I'm going really slow and you really want to go slow because otherwise the drill could slip or you could go too fast and just crack your dowel rod. A drill press would be nice about now. Take your time, we're in no hurry. We want the finial to go on top, so we're going to have to drill another hole so that the peg can be inserted in there. Again, you're just going to want to take your time, go slow with the drill, and then make sure that your drill bit is in the center. See how this was going off center and I had to go ahead and correct that because if not, your finial is going to be off center. I'm placing my dowel rod back into the candlestick and wedging that in there. Then I'm taking my finial and I'm putting that right on the top. I'm then inserting the smaller dowel rod through the hole of the larger one. Then with a tape measure, you want to make sure that the dowel rod is centered. And then we're going to find the center point of each side. Go ahead and mark that with a pencil. And that is where an eye hook is going to go in there so we can hang one of the plates. Do the same thing with the other side. I'm going to drill some holes that are slightly smaller than the eye hooks and we're doing that so that when we screw in the eye hooks the dowel rod does not crack. Flip the dowel rod over and you're going to want to make another hole on the opposite side. Make sure that they're both in the same spot. Don't have one on the top and one off to the side or else your eye hooks are never going to line up correctly. Now you want to screw an eye hook through one of the sides. Insert the dowel rod into the hole and then screw in the other eye hook. I found these cute little doodads at Hobby Lobby and this is what's going to cover up the top part of the screw. All right, so let's start gluing some of this together. I love using Type-On because it dries so incredibly strong that you don't have to worry about anything. I'll leave a link to where you can buy this glue in the description. Now it takes a little bit to dry and just so it's not slipping around, I'm gonna use a little bead of hot glue just to hold it in place. 
Now you want to wedge that in there real good and make sure that it's standing completely straight and not crooked. Now we want to glue the small dowel rod into the large dowel rod. And we're going to use some of that wood glue again. We're going to put a little on one side and then put a little on the other side of the hole. You're going to want to make sure that your eye hooks are facing downwards because that is where your plate's going to hang. Again, I'm just going to use a little hot glue to hold that in place until that wood glue dries completely. Now let's glue the finial down. And we'll finish by gluing down those little doodads. You can even try screwing them in just to secure them even better. Okay, so we have an eight inch plate. So we're gonna make like a triangle. So we're going to drill a hole here, and if we drill a hole there, let's see about maybe five and a half, five and a half, five and a half. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. Drill here, here, and here. If you place the other plate on the bottom, you can mark with the drill so that both of the plates will be exact. Now you have your mark lines and you can just drill those holes and they'll be in the exact same spot as the other plate. Now let's go ahead and paint this. I'm going to use Annie Sloan's graphite paint and we're going to go ahead and just cover the entire thing. We're going to even paint the plates and it's going to require two coats. Once the plates were dry, I took a little Annie Sloan clear wax and I put it all over the plates. This will protect and seal them. You want to use a cloth when you're using this wax. I don't know why I did it, but I used some paper towel and it does leave a little bit of lint and you don't want that. So just use a cloth. Now it's time to string these plates up. We're gonna do that using jute. You're gonna take a piece of jute, push it through the hole. You're gonna to wanna to leave enough at the bottom that you can tie off later so this will hold the plate. You're gonna to wanna to measure enough jute that can go all the way up to the eye hook and then come back down and come through the hole on the opposite side of the plate. Make sure to leave enough 
on the bottom that you can tie off later. Once that piece of jute is through the eye hook, you're gonna need one more piece of jute to go through there as well. Cut a piece that is gonna be long enough to hang down and go through your plate. And you're gonna tie that to the eye hook. Now you should have three pieces hanging down. One is inserted in the plate and the other two you need to put in each of the holes. Finish by taking the last two pieces of jute and putting them through each of the holes. It really helps if you have something underneath so you're not having to hold the plate while you're trying to get that jute through the holes. Push the plate up to the desired length and then you're going to want to make knots underneath making sure that the plate is level. You might have to reposition it if you see like one side's hanging down a little lower. No big deal. Take the knot out and just re-knot it. That looks good. It's hanging perfectly. Do the exact same thing with the other side and make sure that the plates are level with one another. Now using a little hot glue, we're just gonna secure all the ends. We're gonna secure the ones on top, and then we're also gonna secure the ones underneath the plate. And there you have it, a very inexpensive farmhouse scale. You can add cups with a little bit of greenery and it's just gorgeous on display. I do carry these seeds and herbs decals in my Etsy store if you're interested in those. Now on to our last and final project. Now what you didn't see on our Goodwill trip is that I bought this mother goose cutting board. It started by sanding off the whole entire tool painted mother goose. Once I had this all sanded nice and clean, I went on to paint. I'm using the bare paint and primer in one in pure white. You're gonna paint the front and the back and you're gonna need two coats for this. While that was drying, I cut some letters using my silhouette. I needed to peel away any extra vinyl that was not gonna be used. I then weeded out any vinyl that was in between the letters. Using transfer tape, I placed that over our design. Using a credit card, I went over the transfer tape just so that the lettering would stick to it. I then began to peel the transfer tape off the backing. Now it's time to put our design onto the breadboard. I went over the transfer tape again with a credit card and I carefully peeled back the transfer tape.
I went over our design one more time with the credit card just to ensure that all the lettering was securely down. And look how beautiful our breadboard turned out. I love it. It looks so nice. Bellagio Baking Company. This final decal will also be in my Etsy store if you're interested in purchasing it. If you like this episode of Flea Market Rescue and you want to see more episodes like this, make sure to subscribe to my channel and ring the bell. My name is Kelly Sherry and this has been Flea Market Rescue.